All right, next off, we're going to talk about how to do a differential white blood cell count. And we do a differential white blood cell count when we suspect there might be some kind of infection or something is not right with a person or a patient. So remember, there are five different types of leukocytes or white blood cells. And those include neutrophils, eosinophils, uh, basophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes. And so knowing the proportion of those relative to each other can tell us if there's an infection and if so, what type of infection that person might have. So let's take a look at our representations of the red and white blood cells. So what you can see on this model is blood is made up of white blood cells, which are the bigger cells, as well as the red blood cells, which are these guys uh, right in here with the red part. And then it's also made up of the sort of yellow stuff, which is our blood plasma. So again, blood is a connective tissue, and connective tissue has cells, but it also has an extracellular matrix, which in this case is the plasma. So what we're trying to do in a differential white blood cell count is count 100 white blood cells and see what proportion are neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, etc. Now, you would never hopefully see this many white blood cells in one field of view under the microscope, but it's here to help us uh, learn about uh, how, in theory, to make a differential count. And what I want you to do now is look at the total number of white blood cells here. So let's see, one, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so 15 total white blood cells here. And we're going to identify each one of them and put them into one of the five categories. So ordinarily, neutrophils are the most abundant, uh, uh, most abundant leukocyte. Uh, and the acronym that we use is never let monkeys eat bananas. So never stands for our neutrophils. And we can see that the neutrophils are right here. There's one, two, three, four, five. So five of those cells are neutrophils. And you can see that some of them have a very segmented nucleus and some are not so segmented. And that just represents older neutrophils. In any case, five out of 15 of our cells are neutrophils. So five out of 15, that's one out of three, or 33% uh, are neutrophils here. So let's look at the other cells that we see here. Well, another type of cell that I see, uh, let's look for the lymphocytes, because they're supposed to be pretty abundant too. So I see one, two, three, so three uh, lymphocytes there, one, two, three, and uh, lymphocytes are agranular, they don't have granules in there, uh, and they don't have, uh, you know, that type of uh, segmented nucleus there. So if three out of 15 uh, are lymphocytes, that equals one out of five, or 20% lymphocytes. Okay, now let's go take a look at another white blood cell. So never let monkeys monocytes. Let's look at our monocytes. So this is a monocyte, this is a monocyte, and this is a monocyte. Monocytes often have this big U-shaped nucleus, okay, horseshoe-shaped. And again, they differentiate into macrophages, which are those big uh, phagocytotic eating cells. And this one is a, mo a monocyte too. It has a sort of kidney bean shaped appearance. So three monocytes out of 15, uh, again, that translates to uh, one uh, out of five, if I'm doing my math right. So that would be 20%. Okay, and finally, uh, so never let uh, monkeys uh, eat. Let's look at our eosinophils. So eosinophils uh, have these sort of orange to pink staining granules. They have a nucleus that kind of looks like an old telephone receiver if you're old enough to have seen one of those. And again, we can see three of those. Now normally uh, eosinophils uh, deal with uh, large parasitic infections like uh, parasitic worms or things like that. So we'd expect them to be elevated during that type of infection. So here we can see that three of those 15 cells uh, are indeed eosinophils. So three over 15, I think translates to one over five or 20% there. Okay, now let's look for the usually least abundant uh, of our uh, leukocytes, and that's gonna be our basophils. So basophils, this really doesn't look like a great representation of the basophil, but this is what they're meaning when they point to the basophil. So basophils are granular leukocytes. Uh, they usually look dark purple. Sometimes they can be confused under the microscope uh, with the lymphocytes in here, but it is granular and uh, it does have uh, a lot of purple stain in there. So basophils secrete histamine uh, and they um, basically, you know, histamine causes that sort of inflammation we associate with hay fever and stuff like that. So we've got our basophils here and we can see that only one of the 15 cells is a basophil. So you can do the math on that and get the percentage as well. So all of these percentages should add up to 100%. 
And when we're doing this for real with our real blood smear, we're going to hopefully look at more than just 15 cells. We're going to look at 100 cells so we get a good uh, repetition there. And you're going to have to look at a lot of different field of views in order to uh, identify uh, 100 cells uh, under the microscope. So keep in mind that you probably will never see this many white blood cells in one field of view.